Hello and welcome to this week's video. Now I get so many questions regarding the materials and equipment I use for my portraits and also how I run my business so I thought I would go over some of the ones I can't live without. Starting off with pencils. Now 100% of my portrait work is drawn with these pencils and I use three different types. My favourite and most used type is Faber-Castell Polychromos. It is an oil-based pencil and it's super pigmented with a, quite a subtle lead so I'm able to sharpen it to a very sharp point for fine details. I use Polychromos for base layers in my work as they provide a smooth buildable surface for more layers. They're quite affordable compared to some of the other pencils that I use anyway. The next type I use is by a brand called Car and Dush and they are the Luminance pencils. This is more of a wax based pencil and therefore quite creamy. It is buildable like the Polychromos but has a much softer lead so I find I can't achieve many fine details with this pencil. Now the Luminance are a lot pricier than the Polychromos but do have some lovely neutral tones which I really can't live without. Lastly for the pencils and also by Car and Dush is the Pablo. This is an oil based pencil like the Polychromos but doesn't feel quite as strong however the Pablos come in a wide range of colours which make them a staple in my portrait work. Overall the pencil I use the most is definitely the Polychromos. When these pencils are about 70% used, like this one, it is super difficult to sharpen them and hold them so obviously I don't want to waste any so I bought this pencil at the centre from Derwent. I picked this one up from Amazon and then it comes with a pack of two. Each at sender is designed for different thicknesses of pencils so this one's great for the Polychromos and the Pablos and the other one allows me to extend the Luminous as it's a bit of a thicker pencil but it is such an essential tool for me as these pencils aren't all that cheap so it's important for me to use them up completely. Now that brings me nicely onto sharpness. I've used a fair few over the years but this one's by far my favourite. It gives me a very sharp point and looks like this. So as you can see it has two different blades. The first one sharpens the main part of the pencil whereas the other one sharpens like the very end. Um, it comes with a spare set of blades with each sharpener. Um, to replace them is a bit fiddly but you can just buy the replacement blades online so you don't exactly have to replace the whole sharpener which is fab. So when drawing the outlines or doing any line work for my portraits I always use a mechanical pencil. This one is from Derwent and is a 0.7mm lead. Using this allows my lines to be super fine and crisp. Like with most mechanical pencils, it comes with a um, load of refill leads, which is obviously here. Yeah. It's a good thing. Um, for any mistakes I make, I just use normal rubber. I think this one is from Derwent, but in all honesty, I can't really remember. It does a job, so yeah, it's all good. This, on the other hand, is a game changer and I honestly can't be without this. It is the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. It works a bit like a mechanical pencil. I use it for getting rid of pencil lines around the eyes in a portrait before I go in the colour pencils. I really can't rate this highly enough. I cannot live without this. Um, you can also purchase refill erasers for it. Um, I tend to get mine online. I will try and link everything I mentioned in this video below for anyone who wants to go and have, check anything out. Rubbing out often leaves little bits of rubber on the paper and I never like touching the paper once there is pencil down as it can cause smudging. So I just use a very soft paintbrush to gently brush the paper clean. This one's super old but any soft brush will work great. I keep a small glass jar next to me for putting sharpenings in otherwise they tend to get absolutely everywhere. This one I think was like an old small jam jar or something but literally I just use whatever is next to me at the time really. Right, now I use an A2 cutting mat, long ruler and standing knife to cut paper, especially as the paper I use is very thick and isn't always the easiest to cut. So the paper I use for my work is by a brand called Fabriano Artistico and I use a hot pressed watercolour paper in the heaviest weight possible and I get the paper colour extra white. I purchase it in large sheets and then cut it down to the size I need. I absolutely love this paper, it allows me to put so many layers of pencil down and where it's super thick it just feels really sturdy and well basically I just haven't found any other surface that allows me to achieve the level of detail I like to put into my work. Now I thought I would include some of the technology I use for both my artwork and the business. Um, the first one being my very large iPad Pro. The screen on this is, is very clear and big and I can zoom in and see lots of details in the reference photo. I tend to work side by side with with the photo on the left and my work on the right the system tends to work really well for me and it means I don't have to strain my eyes or my neck too much sort of looking up and down 
Once I finish the piece of work, I use my Epson B600 scanner. It is an A4 scanner, but I can scan larger pieces of work in segments and then the stitch them all together in Photoshop. It works great with my MacBook Pro, which is what I run my business from, and also use Photoshop on. It scans to a very high resolution, so I can produce my own fine art prints to a really high quality, which is obviously fab. So as I mentioned, I use Photoshop after scanning the artwork to clean it up and colour match the prints to the original pieces. Once this is done, like this one, I can save the file and then print out the limited edition prints to order. This brings me on to my printer, which is the Epsom Shaw Colour P800. It prints up to A2 and the inks are archival, so brilliant for fine art print. A bit like the scanner, it works seamlessly with my MacBook and the print quality is always amazing. The paper I use for my fine art prints is Somerset Velvet. I buy it in flat sheets and just feed them into my printer like this. I outsource the mounting process to my local framers who use museum quality grade materials and do an incredible job every time. From there I sign and number each print and attach a certificate of authenticity before cellophaning and sealing the prints like this one. For larger prints I tend to send them rolled as it's a much safer way and reduces the risk of any damage in transit as larger prints tend to be a bit more vulnerable so obviously they've got more um, surface area. But anyway, I think that's pretty much all my greeting materials and equipment which I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe picked up some useful info. I hope you have a lovely day and thank you for watching. Bye!